Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I'm going to make along with you the Baronia Bowler Blake Bronia Bowler Bag by Blue Cala. That is really hard to say. Let me show you some of the features of this bag. So it's a very classic looking bag. This main panel can be made in your choices of vinyls, corks, cottons, whatever you like, whatever your machine can handle. Um, this, uh, where the vinyl is here, this does need to be vinyl as there are raw edges all the way around. I've edge coated mine. It's very unique shape and a very unique construction. The double zipper pull goes all the way down to the base of the bag, which enables this bag to open up really nice and wide, which I will show you. Like this. So I used a waterproof canvas in this. Look how tight that lining sits inside this bag. The construction of this really helps do that. You can see in the corners here, it's just those two little spots that is bound just very, very easy binding, um, just two little short sections, but that allows this to have that really, really tight lining. So this bag is turned as well as bound, if that makes sense. You watch the video, you will see how much sense that makes. Um, we have, uh, I've put two slip pockets on one side, a decorative a zipper pocket on the other side. Uh, all my vinyls are from Galaxy Customs. This is the rose gold croc vinyl. Um, and this is the rose gold uh, metallics vinyl from Galaxy Customs. All my hardware is from m and Bags. My zipper and zipper pulls are from Blue Cala. And I used a waterproof canvas on, on the inside. Other than that, there's not too much more to repeat. Oh, okay. I use Pretty in Pink Soap Foam as my main stabilizer. I have Decaville Heavy in the base for that stabilizer. If I was using cotton pieces for my linings or exterior, I would have uh, used EB Fuse Light or something similar to SF101 to interface those. But besides that, that is really all you need to make this bag. It's minimal hardware, minimal fabric, and minimal interfacing as well. Anyways, how about we get to making this bag? You are going to need some rivets, number five zipper tape. four rectangular rings, a nameplate, three number five zipper pulls, and purse feet. You're going to need your exterior overlay. I have edge painted these curved edges already. You're going to need some foam stabilizer, some Decaville Heavy stabilizer or Peltex, two zipper pocket lining pieces, your binding piece, your slip pocket piece, you are going to need four mirrored sets, a total of eight pieces for your gussets. Your main lining pieces. Your two main exterior pieces. Your handle pieces. Four connectors. I'm gonna go ahead and make my straps off camera. If you need a class for that, that's down below in the description. All right, so to make our connectors, I've already gone ahead and drawn a one inch line down the middle. I'm gonna take some double-sided tapes. You can definitely do this on a domestic machine as well as we will not be sewing through this double-sided tape. You're gonna fold those long edges into that center line. Do the same with the other three. Right, so once that is done, you want to take from one of the short ends, you want to mark down two inches or so with an erasable pen. On the wrong side of the connectors, from the opposite short end, you want to um, put a little bit of double-sided tape outside of the top stitch seam allowances, of course. Put your rectangular ring to that two-inch mark. Fold away some of that tape and fold that other short end over, installing that rectangular ring and you're going to do the same with the other three. Next we're going to take our main pieces, find your top and bottom centers, these are of your exterior pieces. 
double check that they are definitely centered. Okay, and on our connector piece here from that folded part where our rectangular ring is, I'm just going to measure down and make a mark one inch down. Next, we want to measure up one and five eighths from that bottom. And then from that center bottom mark, I'm just gonna use my two and a half inch ruler here, lining up my top and bottom center marks and using the right side of the ruler like so to line my straps. So we want our straps or our connectors to be five inches apart or two and a half inches away from our center marks. And I'm just using my double sided tape to, tape to hold those down. Then I'm going to go up here across that line and down, top stitching to hold those in place on both panels. So that is done, as you can see. Next, we're going to take our overlay piece, and I have centered my Decaville Heavy already into the center part of this for my bottom. And now we're going to mark using our pattern piece where we will be placing our purse feet. I just punch holes in my pattern pieces to show so I can just draw through and trace it. If you need a class on purse feet, it is down below in the description. I always put some duct tape on the prong side just to make sure they are secure. And now we are going to go ahead and we are going to sew along that Decaville heavy piece, making sure our bobbin tension is really nice because that is what's going to show. And we are going to sew all the way around our Decaville heavy or Peltex piece here. So this is going to give us a really nice decorative bottom. Um, again, I just multi I'm just checking multiple times to make sure my stitching is good on the bobbin side. I also started pulling my threads long because I'm going to tie off my thread so I don't have um, a built up a thread in our back, our back stitched section. So I already pulled on that top thread, pulled the other thread through the other side. And then as we make our way back to that starting stitch, we want to make sure our needle falls right into the exact same hole as that starting hole like so. Hold on to your threads, make sure they're long, give a pull on that top thread through um, to pull through the bobbin thread to this side of our work. Tie those four strands off in three or four knots and this just gives us a nice seamless look in our top stitching on the opposite side. Okay, so now that that's done, we are going to attach this to our completed main panels. So right along this part here, on both sides, we are gonna put a little bit of double-sided tape. And on our main panels, we are gonna measure up a half inch, I believe it was. Double check your pattern piece to make sure I am correct. Take the overlay piece. And I'm actually gonna put just a little more double-sided tape right here. You can see I'm making sure to keep it out of where we will be top stitching. So it's about a quarter of an inch down from our uh, painted edges here. And now with these two edges here, we are going to line the top of the overlay up with that one half inch, that half inch line that we did on both sides. And once those are in place, take the double sided tape off of the top part, stick it down in place. You can see how they go nice and smooth against the lines here and we're going to go ahead and top stitch along this curvy edge. While we're top stitching, I do have to apologize if my voice sounds a little bit off. I've had laryngitis for the past week or so, so my voice, this is the first day I've had it back and I'm just trying to use it to get this tutorial out to you guys. So um, please excuse the raspiness of my voice.
Then once that is done, you're going to do the exact same um, thing with the opposite side of the overlay and the other main panel. So you can see I have finished that here. Next I'm going to take my foam, I'm laying this panel over top and I'm going to use it as my template for my phone and then baste my foam onto um, my main panel here. I also went ahead and did my uh, rivets and my um, nameplates. As you saw there, I had also gone ahead and did my inner lining zipper pockets and stuff as per the classes down below in the description. Next we're going to take our our gussets here. We're going to put them right sides together. We are going to sew with a sew along every side except for the straight side. So the three short sides and the slanted side of these with a three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And you will do this with all four gusset pieces. So I'm showing you two gussets put together here. These were put right sides together again and then sewed together. So now what we want to do is we just want to trim off the corners as close as we possibly can to that stitching and then go ahead and turn these right side out. Once you have these corners poked out nice and sharp, you will take these to the iron and just give it a really good press. Okay, once that is done, those uh, stitch sides, we're gonna go ahead and top stitch. And you will repeat the same process with the other four uh, accordion gusset pieces. All right, so now we are going to take one of our lining pieces. We're going to measure up an inch from this short kind of slanted side here. And that is where we are going to line up our gusset pieces. Now you want to make sure that the gusset pieces, the wider end is at the top of our work like I'm showing here. Same with the other side, and you're gonna go ahead and baste those on. So this is what it looks like here. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and we are going to work on our zipper tape. Now I'm using Zipper by the Yard. I do not have my pulls on, but I am making on the back side of these a one inch line across the bottom. That'll make it easier for lining up the tape to put our pulls on at the end here. I'm also marking the center of my pulls or of my zipper tape here. Once you have those lines all done, you can go ahead and pull your zipper tape apart. So with half of the zipper tape and one side of our lining, we're going to mark up that both of these are right side up. You're going to match up that center mark with the center mark of our lining piece. And you are going to work this around that curve using a lots of clips. It's a little bit awkward to get it around this curve, but just take your time um, to make sure everything is nice and even and there are no bubbles or, or puckers or anything. Um, and you'll be fine. It's super easy. Work your way all the way down each side. And once again, the lining piece and our zipper teeth are both right side facing up. That's one side done. Okay, and now we are going to take this to the machine and sew this on. Now this is where you are going to want to install your zipper foot. Trust me, it'll help you get a really nice straight zipper if you put a zipper foot on at this point. Okay, and now we can go ahead and sew this on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance.
using a stiletto definitely helps hold that uh, zipper tape where it needs to go nice and tight against the lining fabric especially when it comes to those curves um, and it also is a little bit of a finger saver so you don't accidentally sew through your finger you will also notice I have left my zipper tape quite long this is on purpose this makes it easier for installing the zipper pull once we have our tape sewn onto both halves of our bag As you can see, I took it nice and slow. That's just to make sure my zipper goes on nice and straight. So I've done that with both sides of my bag of my pieces here, uh, my lining pieces. Now we want to attach it to the bag here. So you're going to match up that center point of our exterior piece and our lining piece right sides together. Once you've got that center clip together, then you're going to go down to the sides as I'm doing here and then ease that fabric around. Now when you get to this corner, it's going to feel a little awkward. What I did was just kind of popped the, um, the zipper so it's kind of, I think that's concave, so kind of flush against the lining and it just kind of gives it this little bit of a, a um, concave look but that is okay we want to make sure that that zipper tape is nice and flat in between the layers so it doesn't accidentally get caught in our stitching so then we're going to go ahead and sew around this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance Once again, taking it nice and slow around those curves so you get the really, really beautiful shape that the Baronia offers. Okay, so that is done. So you can take these two pieces and kind of flip them wrong sides together like this. Push out that seam really nice and sharp. Double check that your zipper tape looks nice and even, which mine does. Now we need to top stitch this. So one thing you want to make sure is that these accordion gusset pieces are nice and pulled nice and taut away from the zipper tape because um, we are going to top stitch these into place. So I'm just going to hold them with um, some pins here reaching in between the layers. So I'm only catching my lining fabric with those pins. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to top stitch along here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, just double checking that that gusset piece is away from the zipper teeth and out of the way because if it gets too close to the zipper teeth, it may block your zipper being able to open and close.
All right, so that's one side done. You're going to do the exact same thing with the other lining piece and the other side of the bag. Okay, so we have that all done. This is what it looks like here. So I just want to make sure my zipper is straight. So I'm going to, I'm going to put my pull on just to see. So this is where we made those one inch lines on the bottom of our zipper tape. That is so when I'm putting it through my zipper jig here, I'm not going to pull it too far until those lines match up. Once they match up, I know my, my um, tape is nice and straight and I'm just going to do it up and make sure everything looks good and everything does. Looks beautiful. So now you can go ahead and we can take these off again. You can decide if you want to leave your pulls on at this point or pull them off. I actually end up pulling them off here momentarily because um, now what we are going to do is take our lining pieces and kind of pull them up like this. So our lining pieces are right sides together in a way and we want to match up. It looks really awkward. Just squish it all in. Trust me, it'll work. Um, and line up the bottom edges right sides together of our two lining pieces. Now one thing I learned with this is originally I had left a opening in my zipper pocket to turn this through. Um, I find it a lot easier I, as I went on that I didn't have to turn through there. So you can have your zipper pocket sewn up at this point. We will not need it uh, to do anything. So once we have our uh, lining pieces, the bottom pieces all together, we're gonna go ahead and sew that shut with a half inch seam allowance. Okay, so as you can see, I've pulled my pulls off because it's just gotten super awkward. <laughs> and what I'm going to do, as I said, rather than pulling through the zipper pocket, I am going to turn this right side out through the openings in the sides, one of the two sides of the bottom. It's actually fairly easy to pull it through these sides. Just make sure you're not tearing anything. Take it nice and slow, massage it, work it through, and all will be well. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Our bottom is sewn up. We've turned it through those sides, and I've gone ahead and I have just, I'm going to go ahead and just baste our lining and our exterior pieces together right at this bottom um, part where we will be doing binding. You don't have to do this. I just find this easier to know that they are working as the, all the layers are working as one unit. So when I go to bind this, I know I am catching everything and something isn't folding out of the way. Just an extra step to help make things a little bit easier. Okay, so once that is done, we are so close to being done here. Now we are at this point going to want to put on our zipper pulls, which I have done already. You want to make sure both of your pulls are on. And now we are going to square these corners. So from the inside, so you have this, so the lining is facing out. You're going to line up the bottom center seam with the middle of the zipper tape. This is another reason why I kept it long. It really just helps line things up better and bring those, the bottom and the sides together and sew across that with the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance like I have done. I'm just gonna look in the bag, make sure it all looks good from the inside. Coco's saying hi to everybody. <laughs> you can now go ahead and trim off the extra zipper tape. And now we're gonna bind. Now I was gonna bind this with my uh, canvas, but I decided I'm gonna go with what I know best and that's the bias tape. Um, binding here. So if you need a class on how to do this method of binding that is down below in the description or you could just kind of watch here. Um, as you can see I folded my bias tape out. 
I have taken a folded edge and kind of wrapped it around the raw edge as well. So this is completely folded out and we're going to go across here with a quarter inch to a half inch seam allowance. Once we have that, we're going to fold the bias tape into itself because it is double fold. Fold it over the raw edge, making sure all of the raw edges of our lining is enclosed as well as all of our raw edges of our binding is enclosed down into the center. Clip in place. Again, I do have a class on how to do this in more description down below um, in the description. Go ahead and top stitch right along that fold and that has bound those two raw edges. Now, last but not least, we need to do our gussets. So you are going to go ahead and clip along that diagonal edge here, top stitch them with an eighth of an inch seam allowance on both sides as we have done, and then you get to turn the bag out. So this is a really, really fast bag to sew. Um, it is super easy. That binding uh, is just very two very small short edges. Do not be scared of the binding. This is probably the easiest binding job you will ever do because <laughs> it's just two straight edges. So go ahead and turn your bag right side out, pushing out those bottom corners. And you can see how nice and sharp they are. And look how tight that lining looks when you've done the binding that way in that area. Make sure it closes up with your two zipper pulls shape the bag and then all that's left is to go ahead and put your handles on and then we're done all right that's it that's all what did you think of that it's it's a really really fun make again i've been making this one one uh, for the past four years, uh, this was one of the very first styles of eggs I ever made. It does say it is an intermediate pattern on the website, but really I tackled this at a beginner and was successful. I believe you can do the same. I did have our July 2022 class. What Thursday class was the Baronia Buller bag. So if you would like a slowed down class rather than this quick tutorial, you can definitely uh, join the membership side there um, and be able to watch all the class replays on this if you wanted to, as well as all the replays of all past classes we have done on that side. All that information is down below in the description if you'd like to join there. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, please do give me a thumbs up. Um, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. And again, other ways of supporting my channel are you can buy me a coffee. That's down below in the description. And once again, you can join the membership side where I have live sew-along classes. Until the next one, I'll see you again. Bye-bye.